That negative energy just had to have soaked into every fiber of this wood. This place had like an atom bomb and negative energy dropped on it that night, which I think is still here. Jeff? Axe! Axe! That door to the house in that clip is just swinging. <laughs> Okay, everybody, so it's November 2020 right now. After taking a break from filming for a little while, I'm back on the road, this time with my parents, Mary and Jeff, and we're headed to a small town in Iowa named Villisca. Now, this is a very small community. A couple thousand people live here. Nothing too remarkable in terms of commerce. It's a very charming little place to live. I'm sure everybody here just loves their life and they're content with where they're at. It's one of those classic American towns where you don't think anything could go wrong. But back in 1912, it did. And Villisca made national news as the home of the Villisca Axe Murders. There's a house in Villisca. This house is known to be one of the most haunted places in the entire United States. And this is not a good haunting either. Apparently this is a very negative, very physical, very violent haunting. I believe this was just two or three years ago actually, an investigator who was in the house investigating, just a regular ghost hunter like myself or my parents, he became overwhelmed with some sort of a negative energy and ended up stabbing himself. There seems to be some sort of an energy in the home that wants to take people over, wants to control you, and wants to make people commit these atrocities. Maybe this is the energy that caused the killer to do what they did back in the day. Maybe it's been here longer than the house has been itself. But we're on the road right now. We're gonna roll up to the house, get started, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a spooky ass night. And also, we have Bentley, my family's dog right here. And uh, he and I are gonna try spend the entire night tonight in the house, just the two of us. So, what do you think about that, buddy? Um, I don't think he thinks very much. <laughs> I'll check back in once we're there. Hey guys, Johnny Hauser here at the Villisca Axe Murder House. We're gonna go out and go inside and show you some hot spots and tell you a little bit about what happened. So come on in. So right here we have the 
kitchen. Not a whole lot happened, of course, in here. Right against the corner was that morning when they found him, the bloody pot of water where whoever washed his hands. Mirrors covered. Also had half-eaten food left at the table. So throughout the night, the main idea is this person was probably already in the attic hiding. Crept out, killed the parents, got the kids, got the two downstairs, went back, got them again, again, again. Left the axe, made himself a meal, covered mirrors, whatnot. As far as activity, it seems like this room and the living room, which we'll go in right now, are almost kind of safe zones. Stuff happens, but not to the extent as upstairs. Upstairs is probably 90% of everything. Reverend Kelly, the only guy that ever confessed to it and was ever tried, he was acquitted of all charges because he's just insane said that voices told him rise peter slay and eat a shadow came out of the backyard gave him an axe said he walked in this door here at 1 a.m and voices told him slay utterly he said he killed everyone then he said he didn't then he said he worked for the queen of england i mean he was just all over the place <laughs> this is catherine's bedroom but this is where ina and lena stillinger were staying that night so in this room you had the uh Ina and Lena, and they weren't neighbor kids. They lived like seven miles outside of town. They were in this room. The raw bacon was on the floor, mirrors covered again. The ax was left right up against the door frame there. And as far as this room, it has a very Amityville quality to it. It's kind of a mental manipulation type thing going on. And this is where the guy stabbed himself two or three years ago. Said he was just in here provoking, woke up in the emergency room, didn't know what happened. But evidently he took a hunting knife that was on his side and just right through the chest. So I just tell people that story just because if you're in this room and you start getting weird, go outside, get some fresh air. <laughs> Don't push the issue in this room for sure. The crime scene, when the doctor, physician, minister came in, basically you had Ina and Lena in this bed. The oldest one was on the outside and her leg was kind of dangling off the bed and her arm was up like that. She had a defensive wound on her arm. Well, they say a defensive wound. She had a mark on her arm where they said she went up to block. My thought is how do we know she wasn't sleeping like this? Because they were all just hitting the heads with the blunt part of the ax. So you just had those two here. Of course, blood is just gonna be everywhere. And again, mirrors covered. This actually had a door on it with an oval window cut out into the door. That was covered with a sheet. Mm -hmm. Uh, these two doors out here, this one and the one in the kitchen had one of Sarah's nightgowns torn in half and that was just kind of draped over. The forensics guys say, oh, well, they'll, they'll cover the mirrors because they don't want to see themselves committing the crime indicating they know, to, know the people. Other people talk about souls being trapped in mirrors. But why would he cover that piece of glass on a door inside the house? Like, they're going to find the bodies at that point. Was it him not seeing his reflection in anything? You know, I think these are little things that could unravel the whole mystery, but also you can't rationalize crazy. The guy thought it'd be a good idea to kill eight people and eat a meal and leave raw bacon on the floor. Like, none of it makes sense. Uh, we'll go up the steps. This is where Reverend Kelly thought he was climbing Jacob's Ladder to Heaven in his confession. So this is the parents' bed. The dad was on the outside, the mom on the inside. Mirrors covered throughout the night. This is one of the ax marks left behind on the back of the wall that was wallpapered over. So he's hitting them with a blunt end. As he's coming back like this, the blade's cutting into the ceiling and the back of the wall, you name it. A lot of people think the killer was hiding in the attic, came out, just boom, boom. Walked over to the top of the steps there and heard something froze because there's a big pool of blood there that wasn't connected with this blood over here. So it's like he <coughs> hit him, took a few steps and just stood there like that. Went in, got those kids, the two downstairs, got them again, again, again. But that's just a guess. And once again, gruesome up here, pretty. On the 100 year anniversary, a forensics team came in and luminoled throughout the house, ran wow. cameras under floorboards and stuff. I came in, I mean, it was just everywhere. And I was skeptical at first, like, man, it's been 100 years. And they're like, well, they would have just wiped it visibly clean. You know, you can paint it, whatever, we'll find it. And I'm like, show me this blood. So they did it and it was all over the place. And it was interesting for about 10 minutes. And I was like, I don't want to see this. And I'm, I love horror movies, you know, I'm big into that, but this is six little kids, this happened. And I was just like, man. So in here is what we call the attic. And most likely the guy was hiding in here waiting. The cigarette butts were found in this room. And it just makes sense, you know, just straight shot for the parents. 
and nobody's going to look in here. And of course, the, the good old Amityville windows, and those are original too. So if you ever go buy or rent a house that has those windows, just don't do it. Just <laughs> run. This is probably the epicenter of everything that happens up here. It seems to stem out of this room. Really? And just kind of flow into the entire upstairs. Which if you figure, <clears throat> if the guy was here, it's June, it's hot. He's sitting in here for a long time, just thinking about what he's gonna do. That negative energy just had to have soaked into every fiber of this wood and everything. This place had like an atom bomb and negative energy dropped on it that night, which I think is still here at that point. And I'd have to be a little guy. I mean, yes. I'm five and nine and I barely fit through yeah. this thing. Jeez. So this is where Herman, Paul, Boyd, and Catherine were all found. The ax marks in the ceiling up here were just everywhere. I mean, this whole ceiling was about destroyed with them. So to come in, look at these little kids while they're sleeping and hit them that many times with an ax is just, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say, you know? A lot of the toys and stuff in this room go off. One of the creepier things I've ever had happen happened up here. Friday night and the overnight's canceled. So I thought, well, I'll fix some stuff and clean up a little bit. Lock the kitchen door so nobody would walk in and trying to figure out how to fix this thing. Pretty soon well, somebody walks in the house. I'm just like, come on people, we're not open. So then I'm like, they have no idea I'm up here, so I'm gonna have fun with this. So I hide in the closet. Plan was scare the crap out of this kid and just be like, why are you breaking in? If you wanna see it, I'll just show it to you. I'm in the closet, walking downstairs, comes upstairs into this room. I kick that door open, do the big blah, nothing. <laughs> I couldn't even move, I couldn't even talk. I was just like, <laughs> you know? And then I went back home, I, I checked the whole house door was still locked watch a surveillance video there's nothing wow. come back about three days later and I'm just trying to rationalize this in my mind and I looking at the door I'm like when I kicked that thing I kicked it right here which then split that all the way up so I kicked that door hard enough to break it like something happened mm -hmm. at that point I'm like I gotta work here guys leave me alone I'll leave <laughs> you alone we gotta have some boundaries like screw with the overnights all mm -hmm. you want fair game wow but leave me out of this. Have you ever had people leave in the middle of the night? Oh, for sure, all the time. A lot. So when I first came here, I was kind of eh about the ghost stuff. Like I believed in it, but I hadn't seen anything. I had my first experience and then I started staying the night and I've done over 400 overnights alone in the house wow. at this point. And I started looking for patterns and birthdays, anniversaries, moon phases, storms, the eclipse. Like, is there a word I can say? Nothing. The Sac and Fox Native Americans were here way before us. And there's no Velisca's anywhere. This is like the only Velisca on planet Earth. It's because it's Waliska, which in the Meskwaki language means evil spirit. So like I taught myself some Meskwaki to go that route. I found no rhyme or reason to any of it. I'd watch overnights. Oh, we rolled a ball. The kids rolled it back to us. We had such a great night. Next night, the people were running out of here at 11 p.m. Left half their gear. I got to mail it back to them. I don't think the family's here which may be controversial to Axe House purists, but I've been here over 15 years, you know. I think the Axe House is haunting itself. It's like rose red and it's constantly evolving and constantly changing and constantly morphing. I, I think it just loves new people coming in, scaring them. So it's hard for people to be in here alone. Yeah, no, for the sure. Hardest. Yeah. Have you seen many people do it? You will be one of five that's ever done this. Really? Myself, uh, another guy I know, there was one lady who stayed two nights by herself. She later claimed that she was in a relationship with J.B. Moore and was like left her husband and yeah, so <laughs> it's Interesting. bizarre, yeah. you know? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I can name like five people, including myself, that's done a solo overnight. That's what I'm going to do tonight. <laughs> you'll be, <laughs> you'll like, be on yeah. the... <laughs> on the, the Axe House Hall of Fame. Yes! For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely think it's going to be kind of spooky being in here. Oh, no doubt. No doubt about it. And I'll never do an overnight again. I, I've swore off overnights at the Axe House. I'll go other places. But a lot of times people will leave. And like if it's a summertime, Friday or Saturday night, and I'm out doing stuff, I'll drive by and they left. And I'll see like a lantern on up here. Like, awesome. Gets guess who gets to go upstairs and shut the lantern off for the <laughs> So yeah, it's, man, good luck tonight. 
I, I don't know what else to say, but good luck. And I, I had one group been here, like, tw we get a lot of repeat people. They were here probably 20, 30 times, and they lasted an hour. I'm like, well, did you guys leave? And they're like, yeah, it just felt weird. Mm -hmm. They're like, nothing happened, but it just felt like something really bad was about to happen. Mm. So we just didn't even want to wow. push it. The craziest, freakiest story I've ever heard involves me. So I wanted to, to recreate what happened that night. We wanted to push the house to its breaking point to get a definitive answer for who did this. So I'm with the ax up in the attic and I have eight friends just randomly come in. I have no idea when, when they're coming. They're kind of hang out for a while. Okay, we're going to bed. You know, they get in the beds. I wait for a while. And I also want to see how did this guy do this? You know, so I creep out with the ax we had cameras, audio going everywhere, and I just hit the floor at the parents' bed. Well, they start screaming. I'm like, this is weird. And we were kind of just loopy because it was like 3 a.m. Went to the kids' room, boom, boom on the floors. Well, the two down in Ina and Lena's room thought I was really like doing it. One of them starts bawling, which the video is priceless. <laughs> he bolts out of the house. And the other guy's like, come on, what are you doing? He goes out of the house. As I'm walking to the staircase, I start feeling like I'm half drunk, like I'm just out of it. I snap out of that and I'm standing in the living room and I look up at one of the IR cameras and I like squint. We don't see infrared. Well, what am I squinting at? Yeah. And I thought I heard a voice and I'm like, guys, I'm done. We can't, this is bad. This is too much. Well, going over the video, as I'm walking from the kid's room to the staircase, the kid's room closet opens and shuts. The attic door slams open. This door opens up. It shows me walk down here. I'm just standing there for I don't know how long. And I'm just like doing this. And then you see me kind of shake it off. I go to that door. And when I thought I heard a voice, the audio caught it and the voice goes, do it. Like to actually do it, which that's some Amityville stuff. I want nothing to do with. So it's kind of like a pattern of people sometimes kind of tapping into that energy. Yeah. Not like it's a conscious thing, but it's almost like in mean, the guy that wounded himself, you having that experience. What do you think that is? So Reverend, I think that's something that was here before the murders even happened. Reverend Kelly is talking about a shadow giving him the ax. Nobody's talking about shadow figures in 1918. I can remember in the 80s when they were aliens and then they're interdimensional time travelers. Now they're the spookiest of ghosts and who knows, you know? Mm -hmm. But also in his confession, he said he, he would cry and say he'd never hurt anyone. He'd never do anything like that. But then he'd say something to the effect of, he felt like he was being forced out of his own control, like he was out of his mind. Then he'd go back to saying he'd never do anything. Then he would add these little tidbits so I think something was here before that even happened. Maybe if you're not mentally strong or grounded in whatever you believe in for protection, that can latch on to somebody. And that's what scares me about this place. That's why, that's this place scares me, but I also respect that to where shadow dude, I want nothing to do with you. <laughs> because if you don't have me here doing tours, you don't, you can't mess with overnighters. Mm -hmm. You need me, <laughs> so to, like leave me out of this. <laughs> Hey guys, so we just wrapped the interview here at the Axe Murder House. Let's go take a look real quick. I haven't been on camera. As you can see, there's still some light outside. So, not very much though. I was hoping to do a little more of a daylight walkthrough, but the sun sets so damn early in the winter that it's like, you can't really get much, but these are the victims. If you didn't know, this was a family annihilation. All these rooms down here, like he was explaining, have history. And I've been here before, like I said, I filmed the whole episode for some reason um, we won't get into, couldn't post the episode. But I remember very distinctly thinking about how creepy this location was, one of the creepiest. I was here with Mary. Wasn't it creepy? It was such negative energy. Very negative. So creepy. And we heard a um, child, child voice upstairs in the attic, which she was saying is kind of the epicenter. But this whole upstairs area is so freaky. One thing that I was wondering though, in the interview, he told me that they brought luminol in here and looked for blood and that every surface in this room for the most part was covered in blood stains. So I don't know if they actually removed those or they just saw that they were here and just kind of left them. 
Here's one of the axe marks. If you can imagine the veracity of somebody, just a, how vicious that would have to be for a tall person, just a child right here, and back, and you're just boom, boom. Like, you'd have to really swing that thing to get it to hit that wall. Hello? There's something kind of by the kitchen and by the steps. Let's see if you, you listen and see if you hear anything. Oh, this is so creepy. If there's anybody in here, you can talk to us at any point tonight. We're not afraid of you. And None of you guys should be afraid of us, whether you are a child, an adult. Yeah. Jeff? There's nobody down there. Calling. Jeff? Yeah. Jeff? Yeah. Jeff? Can you walk upstairs? I don't know what that was. What the hell? I thought that was very loud. It was super, super loud. I'm so unbelievably excited to stay here by myself. <laughs> You guys won't even be on the property. You'll be at the hotel oh. just chilling. And I'll be. Oh. Are you sure you want to do that? At this point, I have to. Yes, you'd actually do. Is anyone here? Do you have something to say to us? Did he say anything about like a tomato? Tobacco smell? Mm -hmm. Did he really? Yeah. And most likely the guy was hiding in here waiting. The cigarette butts were found in this room. Oh, honestly, God. I smelled that coming from the attic when we were coming up. I smelled it in that room right there. Just now? When we were, were in there to begin with? I smelled it from right here. Oh but I didn't really gosh. think about it. That's super creepy. And I can smell. And you and I can both smell really well. Mm hmm. And I've never smelled like a smell on an investigation before. Are you downstairs? back here in an hour and go eat some dinner. Get ready to play tonight, everybody. So yeah, finally back at the Villisca Axe Murder House. We're gonna go pay a visit to a couple people real quickly before the investigation begins. But this is a historic night in the show and if I can actually make it through tonight in the house, wake up tomorrow morning, he said I'd be in the Villisca Axe Hall of Fame. But that also means that it has to be quite the damn challenge when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Oh, oh, five oh, out of thousands. Oh, I wanted to get out of there right away. It's a relatively, if you just kind of look at it, they make it look huge, really, on all these productions. It's honestly a pretty small house when you look at it. Totally. Here we are. <laughs> Tonight's the night. Time to get spooky. Get spooky, baby. Okay, let's do it. All right. So, 
We just left the, the Axe murder house mm -hmm. and we're going to the hotel. Mary's driving. And I was just reviewing uh, that little time lapse shot that I just put in there. Now let's cut back and look at that. There's no wind out really today at all. If, if there is a little bit of wind, it's just barely moving the leaves. It's not a windy day. And that door to the house in that clip is just swinging open and shut. And I didn't see that happening at all when we were just standing there doing the interview. It didn't make any noise. The whole interview that I did initially, I didn't see it move one time when I was looking at the house itself. But looking at that clip, it was just swinging back and forth. That's a pretty heavy door right there. So, I don't know. I'm not going to count that as evidence. It's just a weird way to start the night out when you kind of like just go and review some footage and you see that. Obviously, it's a bit freaky. And I'm definitely a little scared for tonight, I'm not going to lie to you guys. creepy scene just walking alone in a snowy cemetery average Monday it's a very very cold night here in Villisca Iowa well it's crazy it's only 545 right now Seems like it would be like 9 o'clock <laughs> so we're here in the Villisca cemetery to come say hi to these guys wow look at all those memorials still later. Wow. And this is where the two Stillinger girls were put to rest. Right here you can see this is their memorial. Stillinger girls are buried, sadly, right over here. Come back over here. As you can see, it's like 28 degrees right now, so my hands are starting <laughs> to get numb and frostbitten. This is the Moors right here, the family that owned the house uh, when the slaughter happened. Real quickly, to any of the Moore family members or the Stillinger girls, if you guys are here, we're only here with the most respect for you and we're so sorry for what happened. But if you could walk back to your house tonight, come speak with me. My name is Colin. I'm gonna be there all night and I can use your protection in case there's something negative in there. So if you could help me out, that would be appreciated. You know where I'm gonna be. Sorry for what happened to you guys, but if you're still out there, let's talk. See you tonight, hopefully. Now let's get the hell in the car, it's freezing. <laughs> special episode of the Paranormal Files. So you've already seen the interview earlier. That was very interesting to hear the stories from this place, not only learn a little bit deeper about the history, but to also explore what's going on here, the, the activity, like what's, what, what's causing it, and to hear theories about the fact that it might not even be the families, the Moors and the Stillingers, or the assailant who killed them haunting the property. It might be something else altogether. Tonight, as you can see, 
the lights are completely out. There are no lights in this house. So the only thing that we've got, here's our little lab over here. We've got a lamp that we have brought in. Looks uh, pretty cheap. We've got our equipment bags. Over here we've got more equipment. Laptops, this is the uh, control room really. And then over here, this is where I will be sleeping tonight. I'm here with my parents and we're gonna investigate. But in about an hour, they're gonna head back to their hotel, bring Bentley, our dog, and then he and I are gonna spend the night together alone in the Axe Murder House, something that only five other people have ever done before. And I'm hoping to become lucky number six. Stairs. Can you come closer to us if you're on the stairs? It's the first time it's gone off. Yeah, it's been there for like 20 minutes. Can you hold on to that little device, that little light? Step even closer. Come on, you got it. That was really good. Can you do it even harder? I've got like goosebumps. Can you step right next to that little red light that's blinking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, step, step even closer. It's perfect. Look at, come on, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, keep stepping down to us. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, that yellow. Yeah, yeah, come on, come down. I'm just saying I felt all that energy and then it's like, it's like passed through. I mean, That's it's crazy. Like, it's like come through here. Look at it go to zero. Too. Yeah. I mean, it, it, honestly, it was like a. Yeah. I just heard like a. Oh, it's crazy though. Look at. It's really crazy. Literally back to complete zero. And it's like really cold in here now. It got very chilly. That was honestly pretty crazy because we were just gonna walk upstairs, which is where we were headed after that monologue, and then the. The REM pod kind of blinked once, and then it, as I asked it to step closer, as you'll notice in that footage, the different lights that light up, it goes green, yellow, blue, pink. Depending on how close you are to the device, a different light lights up, and that was at the length that's like this far from the antenna, and the temperature was changing. And I was doing some weird burst stuff, like brrr, brrr. And that's why when I was saying move closer and it was going to yellow, then to blue, it was actually getting closer while I was saying that. So, we've got our EMF meter, we've got a lantern. We're going to go upstairs, do a little bit of physical investigating, and then try and experiment. I mean, look at how this thing's completely dead. I wonder if you've been walking by it. We'll set it off. Oh, look at oh that. Oh my gosh, that? that's creepy. That this chair was a little bit farther down the. There it goes again. That ball went off too. Is there? Oh. Let's start out up here. Okay, so I'm here with my mom, Mary. Hello. Mama Spooks. Mama Spooks. <laughs> and who's this? Big teddy bear? That's me. <laughs> Peace, Spooks. Uh, I was actually talking about this guy right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> He's cuter, that's for no, sure. No, he rolls forward. Oh, is that? Yeah, that scared it's me. Terrible. Well, that's scary, man. Growing lights out. To anybody who's in here, the Moors, the Stillingers, if there are any ancient 
spirits here, any Native American spirits, or something even darker. No matter what you are, you need to come out tonight and talk to us because we're here to be your friends. If you're here with us, my name's Colin. Jeff. Jeff. Well, say my name's Jeff. My name's Jeff. My name's Mary. Keep coming if that's you. You can walk up here. Who's that? What? What? If you're one of the family that lived here, can you I'm, make a noise? I'm like really dizzy. Are you on the stairs? Can you come all the way up the stairs, please? We just want to talk to you. So what he said, Johnny, earlier was that people can't sit in this chair right here with their backs to the attic. Oh, okay. That's the deal. Yeah, so you guys want to try it, each mm -hmm. of us? Sure. If you're here, can you come talk to me? Did you hear that in there? Yeah, I heard something in there. What was that? Oh, good. Look out, look out. It was like a, uh -huh. think a, a creek literally right behind me. Yep. Is that you over here in the attic? That's where the killer maybe have been hiding. In here? Mm-hmm. That's all attic, attic clever. Wow, I can really feel something. Can you come out and touch? Do you smell anything, Mary? Is that moment in there? Mm -hmm. What are you smelling? I think like cigar. <gasps> what? What? Why? Oh, Mary. What, what, what are you doing? You scared Mary. me. <laughs> oh. No, I'm saying, remember earlier I when know. you and I both smelled tobacco we and we put it on camera? And really? we didn't even tell him that. No. Oh we didn't God, even tell really? you that. No. Yes. We both smelled it. And I don't smell it right now. I can smell it, yeah, like for a, sure. Do you, Mary? No, I was going to say a pipe. Yeah, a pipe. You smell yeah, it's it? it's more like a pipe. I smell a little bit. Let's here. go in here. Oh, my gosh. Hello. Did you follow us up here? It's the exact same pattern. Can you come into the attic with us? Jeez. I'm crazy. What the heck? What was that? Look at that. Gosh. This thing, this thing just went to 3.4. Oh, oh. oh my god. What the hell? Look at that energy over there. Oh! This thing just went to 3.4. Oh my god. What the hell? Look at that energy over there. Oh, I got it. Shields. Shields. <laughs> shields. I got shields. <laughs> if you're with us, can you say hi or hello? Oh, I said hello. Hello. Can you say your name a little louder? Why are why are you here right now? What are you trying to do? Cut you. Cut you. Are you a good spirit or a bad spirit? There's no way in. Look at that thing still I know, going I off. 
What do you think of axes? I was chopped when I was a boy. Yeah. What? That was really creepy. Hey. Wow, there's like a vibration in here. Were you the people that lived at this house? Members of the family? Yeah. Yes. 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 A man? Yes. Attic. Attic or axe? Either uh -huh. one. Something girl. Something about girl. Were you killed here? Six kids. Oh my gosh. Six kids. Oh, there are actually six there kids? Were six kids. Really? Two parents. What were you killed with? My axe. 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 Are you the children that lived here? It's very cold in here. It's freezing. It got really cold. It's really cold. Okay, let's just go. So we're leaving the attic. These two are going to go pick up our dog, Bentley, who's going to be staying with me tonight from our hotel. And then when they get back, we're going to do an EVP experiment before they head out and leave me alone here. Yeah!